Oh, 
almighty and ever-living God. You hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the church of Corinth. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, is having nothing, yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Isaiah 58, 
because there's a, a place where it talks about the ordinances of God and the right judgments of God. And so often in the Bible, they, they select different English translations for the same Hebrew word. And the same Hebrew word here is a word called mishpat. Mishpat. Now, you all know a word in Hebrew, and you should memorize that word. Because what Isaiah says is, it's as if you have forsaken mishpat. You've forsaken the ordinances of God, the order of God, the, the script of God for this universe. You've forsaken it, and yet you want it for yourself. You want these right judgments for yourself, and that's the word mishpatim in, in plural. You've forsaken the big picture, but you want your payoff nonetheless. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, if you look at this from a global religion point of view, in, in the Hebrew, I mean, excuse me, the Hindu religion, they have a very similar thing to mishpat, and that's called rita. And it's basically the way the universe is, the way God designed it. And I think it's kind of like, if you were a musician, it's kind of like the, the uh, what do they call it, the libretto for an opera or the score for a, a symphony, or it's kind of like the, uh, the script for a play or a movie or something like that. And what Isaiah is saying to the people is, you want to be applauded, you want to have a good payoff of a good performance, but you're not working with the rest of the, the script or the libretto or everything else. And you want that payoff. There's something wrong there. And I think what Isaiah is saying was picked up by Paul. Because Paul and so many of the authors of the Bible say it's not the, the mechanics of the fasting. It's not circumcision or uncircumcision. It's not how you get down on your knees and pray. It's what's going on inside you. And it's faith working through love, Paul says. And you have to have faith that this script of God, this, uh, this uh, score of God, these rules that were set by God, you have to have faith that that works. And that's the only thing that works in life. And then you've got to put that to work in your life in acts of love. Now, Jesus, uh, I think there's a lot of texts that, that throw us off in, uh, in Lent and Ash Wednesday especially. Because uh, here we, we're, in a few minutes, we're going to put ashes on our foreheads. What can be more public and what, what can be more of a display for others than that? But Jesus says, don't do that. Do your religion in private, or he says it's secret. And that's different than private, isn't it? He says it's in secret, not so that it can be just between you and God, but I think he's saying it's secret so that in your personal life, you dig down deep in your faith, and you trust in this mishpat of God, or this rita of God, or this script that God has written for your life. So God has given you this script. And the reason these people in Isaiah were complaining was because they had just come back from exile. They had been through war, starvation, death marches. They had been through all that the people in Ukraine are going through today, and maybe in some ways worse. They had been through everything, and now they were full of hope for a while, they came back, and they tried to rebuild Jerusalem, but things weren't working very well. It seemed like the harder they worked, the more squabbling, the more problems that they had in Jerusalem and in Judea. Does that sound familiar? But, uh, the, you know, they had a common problem. They had to build, rebuild the walls and rebuild the temple, but they couldn't get it together. And so that's why they said, it just seems like nothing's working. But Isaiah and Jesus are saying, if you would pay attention to the mishpat, if you would pay attention to what God is doing, you would, things would be different. And you would have not only something to do, but you would be a part of 
the whole cast, the whole uh, of the orchestra, the whole of the body of Christ, and they would be supporting one another. So things would be different. If we had that kind of mishpat, people would live healthier lives because they would be living in concert with the creation. And they wouldn't be as susceptible to these creepy diseases. And if they were susceptible, they would get their acts together and work together to get out of it. If we had this God lived according to God's mishpat, we would make church going so enjoyable, so full of love for one another, that our children and grandchildren would probably kind of like it. Um, I told one, I ran into a fellow pastor uh, after a, an eye appointment the other day, and he said, he was, he's retired too, but he said he's doing some confirmation for three kids in a rural church, and I said, boy, we need that more than ever, so these kids wouldn't think the church is full of a bunch of idiots. Because, frankly, that's a lot of what kids get today. But if we lived according to God's mishpah, it wouldn't be like that. We'd all join together as peacemakers, and there wouldn't be room for Putin anymore. Now, the final question is, you know, how do we get the wisdom and the tenacity and the discipline to live according to God's mishpah. How do we, how do we get in there? What, what is God doing to help us? Well, he's given us the script. He's allowed us to say, well, I can look at the end of the script and I know how it's going to end up and I know it's going to be good. So that should perk me up. It should work me up so that I don't go around fasting with my head down, and looking miserable. I can look up and I can, I can know that my redemption is at hand. But God gives us more. He gives us other people. Uh, if we live according to the script, Isaiah says, we're going to be like water gardens, repairs of the breach, Restores of the streets to live in. We've got to put things that are broken back together. Have you ever seen people like that in your life? When I first came to St. Luke, I remember the first council meeting we had because St. Luke had been through a lot of bad times. Uh, they had been in an interim period for years. They had been through so much nasal gazing and then navel gazing and then introspection. They had been through a lot. They lost half the members of the congregation at that time. But at the meeting, there were the people who hung in there. A lot of people had given up and gotten out of there as fast as they could. But there were people who were hangers on. Uh, people like you guys, the remnant, I guess you say. And we talked a lot about that, and some of the people, I don't want to embarrass them because I, I remember stories about ways that they, they've been hurt by other members, ways that they've been hurt even by pastors that they've had. And yet, they didn't leave. They stuck in there. And these were the same people who did most of the caring work, the, the work for resettling refugees, the work for going down to Bethel New Life, all those other things that went on in the church. Now what I can say is that these kinds of people are the people who are going to repair this world and put things back together for this mishpat, this, this design that God has. Now it may not be, we don't know what God has in store for any particular thing like the life of St. Luke, but I can tell you that the life of the church on earth depends on people like that. So I'm going to read once again Isaiah, some, some of the passages from Isaiah 58, because I, I think they're so moving. Is this the fast I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it just to bow down the head like a bulrush, to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Now, is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke. Is it not to shear your bread 
with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house. When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. I, the Lord, will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth.
Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life. And our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, Sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. And you may either kneel or sit or whichever is most comfortable. I'm going to try to kneel. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another, and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our own fault, by our own fault, by our most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We've shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We've not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy. Almighty God, who have created us out of the dust of the earth, may these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us to all your saints the joy of your resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Please rise if you are able for our prayers of intercession. Drawn close by to the heart of God. We offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord God, you have designed this world to thrive in peace, love, and justice. Feed us through word and sacrament that we may grow in trust in this design, that we may keep a fast this Lent that is full of sharing, full of compassion, full of acts on behalf of justice and peace. And so make us into a people who will rebuild our church, our families, and our nation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. I'll end petitions with merciful God, and if you join in, receive our prayer. Help us, O oh God, to store up treasures in heaven. Not the heaven of escape from this world, but the heaven of this world of yours, redeemed of our abuse and neglect of one another. Help us pay more attention to the holiness of this earth and to give more thanks. Help us humble ourselves this Lent before the majesty of creation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord God, this is your world, even this political world. Stop us from descending once more into the hell of war. Help all peoples of peace fight for justice and equity that ensures peace. Help our leaders stop the advance of authoritarianism and aggression. And, by, and not only by Putin, but by others who hide behind oppression and a fog of lies. Help us put our trust in good government and elect those leaders who will make government work for all. And open our hearts to refugees fleeing the terror of corrupt power. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew our lives this Lent, O oh God. Help us not only to be safe and healthy, but to cooperate with health workers who give their lives for the safety and health of all. Help us touch with your healing all those you have given us to care for, as we mention their names now aloud and in our hearts. Restore us to the joy of your salvation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew St. Luke Congregation, O Lord. As we reorganize, let us not retreat in our mission and ministry. Deepen our faith, increase our love, and draw us into your unfolding work of healing and restoration. We pray that you would keep Pastor Charles, Sarah, Parker, and Andrew strongly in our circle of love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Prayers in the congregation are now welcome. on our foreheads remind us that the curse of death is all too real.
But the promise of eternal life in Christ is far more powerful. We give you praise, O oh God, for all the saints who have died and yet are alive. We think of John Wesley and Charles Wesley and all our loved ones whose memories we cherish. Receive us with them into your eternal embrace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share that peace with one another in any way you see fit. God's peace.